Hello, my name is Hannah Caulfield. I'm here for Honiton Love News, and we are joined by um, Serena Sexton, who's the chair of the commu Honiton Community Complex. That's right. Which um, runs the Beehive in That's Honiton. That's right. Yes. So most people would know it as the Beehive. Most I think. people, yes. <laughs> um, so we're going to just find out a little bit. Obviously, we're in very strange times now mm. with coronavirus, mm. um, and especially the arts have been really affected. Well, it, it was interesting because we had noticed that some of our audiences had shrunk just in those few weeks in March, just before we were told we had to close. Um, I think people had seen the, the effects of coronavirus sort of in other countries and coming through to, to England. So it, it has had a devastating effect on the beehive because most of our work is to do with the arts and the community and all the events that we put on. So we very quickly had to cancel um, a number of gigs and events. Our programme goes through, or was going through to um, 2021. So there was quite a few things that we had to change. But we did meet with the community. Um, I can remember being at the, the main meeting, um, Heather Penwarden um, hosted that meeting with a number of other charities. And we talked about what would need to happen for Honiton to survive this. Um, and our volunteers actually started the, um, I don't know if you, it's in Honiton Coronavirus Information yeah. Line. Yep. So we, we had a group. So we thought, well, whilst the building might be closed, we could at least use our phone lines and be able to give advice and be a hub for all of those uh, community efforts. Um, but there's no doubt that uh, the loss of revenue was a, a, a severe shock um, to us. And also we had been working quite hard. We've been in negotiations with the council since October to try and find a different formula for funding. Um, I think it would be fair to say neither party really liked the lease and the service level agreement. There had been all sorts of disputes about what needed to be paid and you know when. So we had been in talks with the council since October of last year. Um, so when when the actual beehive closed. Uh, we were very fortunate that we were able to apply for the small business funding from the government. Um, so that did help. So where there was a complete stop of usage of the beehive and all our revenue stopped, we were able to access that. And we had to furlough all of our staff, all five members. Um, and again, the, the government has supported us with that. They pay 80%. And the trustees feel it's right that we pay the other 20%. But we had embarked on a quite serious um, event of trying to get sponsorship so that we could become self-sufficient. Because when the Beehive first opened, it was, it was being run by a big group of volunteers. And as it gradually grew and grew, um, it needed to become more professional. We needed to have people who would be accountable for uh, health and safety, um, about employment law, all sorts of things that we needed to be professional in, not just a group of volunteers. But we were very lucky in a being able to secure um, quite a huge group of volunteers to still help us run the beehive. So I think the actual formula is really, really good. Just a small group of staff, but with a really big group of 70, 73 volunteers. Unfortunately, our volunteers are of an age, like myself, that quite a few of them would have had to be in the vulnerable group. Um, so that they're, I can see that they're not massively keen about rushing back to volunteer at the Beehive just yet, and, and quite rightly, I would rather we opened when it was safe to do that. But the funding has become really quite critical now. We have got to know, going forward, what cloth we've got in order to make sure that we can run in a, a proper professional way. Um, so I think the talks that I've had so far, they've been very, 
they've been very polite and they've been very sort of partnership style but we still have not got to that crunch point where the council will agree to provide us with a grant each and every year to the end of the lease um, that that hasn't been forthcoming as yet i am ever hopeful and i have met with the leader of the council um, and it's been a very productive meeting but we're still not out of the woods yet and with nearly every other business um, where we'd applied for grants the priority for the people giving grants has really shifted with the coronavirus quite rightly in my view they've had to look at the vulnerable people and people out of work and they've had to do all sorts of things so the money they had that might have come to us is no no longer there the criteria has changed so and I think for our sponsors many of whom were local businesses um, I think they also have had to look after their own employees so I absolutely understand you know that they're not able to provide sponsorship at this time so that avenue has dried up as well I hope we might be able to get something from the Arts Council but we've not been successful as yet okay. um, so is that looking like more like theatres sort of well I think that they will look to the theatres but usually if it's done through the Arts Council itself you know it'll be the big boys that will get that funding and these very small little independent venues such as the beehive may not be in the running i'm hopeful that we will but it's very difficult to see you know that we're getting too much and because we are a, a non-profit making charity we also do our room hires um, there will be a number of organizations that we let them have the rooms at a reduced rate but we feel that's right because it's our way of giving back to the community you know we've got a number of mental health charities we have devon link up with us we have um there's a whole list uh, cam um, child and adolescent mental health they have sessions we have the blood donors you know we're going to be doing a blood donation um day they use us probably about once a quarter um and it doesn't make a lot of money but we feel that that's the right thing for our charity to be yeah. involved in I mean, it is a huge asset to the town. I don't think anyone can deny that. Um, well, I hope so. I hope, I hope now that it's there. I know there was lots of, you know, arguments and disputes before. Um, well before my time, you know, coming in. Mm. But it is, it is really an essential hub of Honiton. It brings trade into the, to the town. I think we had, it was 78% of the people booking tickets and coming came from inside the EX14 district. The rest were coming into, and they, they provide, you know, they come for accommodation, um, they come, they, they use the local hostelries, you know. Um, they eat in yes, the restaurant. Yes, exactly. They, they exactly. have a drink so, afterwards. So the way we look at it, that all helps the economy for Honiton, you know, which has got to be for the good. In fact, we had one gentleman, I don't know whether you're aware, we've got uh, like a visitor's book and people put yeah. down really nice comments, you know, and I thank them for that. We had one gentleman who actually flew in from Austria to see a gig that we yeah. got. We had some really good Big. quality yes. gigs and we had them all lined up right through yeah. to the end of next year. All of that. The calibre has been astonishing I think it is. for Honiton. I think so. Really quite impressive what you've achieved and I think it's more than that as well like you say it brings people into the town it also puts Honiton on the map I think it's so. um it really transforms sort of how the town is seen yes. you know, by by people elsewhere um and I think as well you could argue we're going to be and are in a very difficult time we're going to yes. be looking at a really hard financial crisis yes um and i think you could argue that the arts are even more important because you know they bring people Lift together it's spirits it's it's mental health everything. issues it's all yeah. of that and if you lost that now i think that would be a, a crying shame i think so and i think we do provide a service we have the the young theatre you know the, the mm. children the performing arts theatre kids isn't that's it, it. and brilliant. we have the town bands they use our rooms to rehearse including the youth section you know there is such a wide group 
difficult people. And scope for more. Yes. I mean, as well, it yes. is building, obviously. Yes. Um, not all groups will be meeting again anytime soon. It's, it's I don't. Yes, and they will have to observe social distancing. You know, we have the church that meets every Sunday. They've had to stop and they've had to reevaluate how they provide their services. Yeah. So, you know, there will be times certainly in the future I'm sure that we will be able to do things and video or put online you know yeah, there are other ways isn't exactly it, in these exactly times. Um, yeah I think how do you see the beehive in uh, in that reopening what sort of I think measures? well we we've, we've I've been meeting with staff and I've been meeting with trustees and taking soundings we've talked to our service users the people who regularly use the rooms and we've asked them what would they need in order to come back to us um, and we are we will be looking I think it will be on a stage event we will probably do the room hires first so those service uses that we're using the building but that is going to cost quite a bit that we have to do um, a big cleaning program we have to check everything is safe we've got to have hand sanitizers we've got to have the proper equipment um, to be able to meet and greet customers coming to the beehive again my volunteers who do that in the main um, we will have to look at how we do that for their safety as well um, but we've already made plans we've worked out where the pink points are I've got a map there yeah. <laughs> of oh, all lovely. the places yeah. let's have a little look <laughs> very good well it's a risk assessment there, it is really it is um, because I'm keen that we we look at this in a way that's going to be safe for our. Yeah, <laughs> that's just one you won't half. Be able to see it I don't know if you can. Oh, is it one yeah, half? Oh, ah, yeah. right. I mean, that's yes, of course. That's right. So there's lots of little pinch points where you think, oh yes, we need to do a one-way system like that. But yeah. if you look at Tesco's, they did a brilliant job. Yes. Why can't we do that? Yes. So, and since we're lucky to have. Duncan Sheridan yes, shop, absolutely. as one of our trustees, you know, I'm absolutely convinced that we you will are. get the right He's the model. man for the job. Yes, he's, he's been really helpful. So we kind of, um, we're looking to reopen, it will be the room hires first, because we have to wait for the cinemas, we'll look and see how other local cinemas, how they manage it, because if they've only got 30% occupancy, that won't even, we won't break even. It's social distancing. We think it's possible but we'll have to wait and see just how that comes on. Mm. We'll also want to see whether there's a vaccine at some point. Yeah, this will change everything won't it? I think it um, will. But the fact is you're confident that the beehive will oh, yeah. come through this. Oh yes. So that's the main And the biggest the thing news. for me is the fact that the staff are absolutely raring to go. They are so committed and they are so wanting to do it. My job is to keep bringing them back, because you know? <laughs> if they had to the plan, yeah, exactly. If they had their way, we would open tomorrow. But they recognise, we recognise that that's not safe as yet, and we wouldn't yeah. have the confidence of the audiences. This is the trouble, isn't yeah. it? It's really now getting people to feel yes. safe and to yeah. enjoy it because why do you go to these evenings yes. because you want to enjoy yourself relax if you're really quite uptight about you know the risks involved yes. then you just won't enjoy it but yeah. i think more and more so now we're finding ways we're very you know um adaptive aren't we as, as a species oh, and we're finding so. ways to, to, to new manage ways, it. Yes. new ways and it's the new normal as everyone keeps saying yeah um so there is a way and there are there are ways lots of ways that um, it can be made possible, it can be made as safe as possible. Yeah. Um, and it's, um, you know, it's exciting to think of uh, the Beehive being open again. Oh yes, I mean, I think it, it, it's a building that needs people in it. It doesn't mm. do well being just... Have you been in and there oh, when it's all empty? It's, it's <laughs> not a nice feeling, it's all echoey, it's not a nice feeling. It needs to have people at the heart of it. Um, and that's what I feel I want to give, or certainly the board wants to give to the people of Honiton, you know, because mm. even our volunteers, it serves 
a real purpose for them. They enjoy volunteering. You know, for some people, that might be the main thing that they do in order to meet other people. It helps with loneliness. Yes. It gives, you know, and people also, that. because they get, a, you know, enjoyment out of being involved in something, that's, yes. it, that's the way these community hubs yes. know, work. And, it and I think we've been starved of that, haven't we, in the yes. last three, four, whatever months. It, it has it felt is. that way. I think yeah. people are very much looking forward to, yeah. uh, to being able to be in a sort of social setting in whatever shape or form that takes. Yes. Um, and to enjoy the arts yep. again, you know. Yep. Very true. And important. to welcome Youth Three A, and to welcome, you know, the the local arts society for them to to come back, but to do it in a safe and measured way. That to us is the most important. Yeah. But we will need to invest, you know, money into getting the uh, precautions all put in place that helps people to feel confident. Yes. You know, both our service users our audiences and our volunteers and staff you know so that everyone feels safe and we'll probably be talking about in order to help we'll probably be talking i've got um, a, a meeting with the board on the 21st of july but we'll probably be talking about um, a fundraising event that just might help Exciting. well i hope it will be if, if we can do it yeah. um because it will it will announce to the people of honiton we're open for business. We'd Certainly love we'll to do that. that. Yeah, well, we'd love it if you could, Sorry. you know. And we would love it if people, um, and I absolutely accept that this challenge that has come into our lives, and particularly for the people of Honiton and the things that they've had to do to get through in a safe way, I hope by that time, people might be able to consider supporting the Beehive by making a donation or making, you know, a direct debit a certain amount per month. I think what's lovely with you, and I think the transparency, people know and can see what the situation is. I hope so. so. <laughs> you know, and that's important. And yeah. people, um, I'm sure, will be keen to see you succeed um, and the Beehive. Well, continue. I would say that there's, there's a really good board right beside, behind yeah. and with me. And the, the staff themselves are just absolutely brilliant, yeah. absolutely brilliant, you know. That's and you can see it in their faces that yeah. they want to be back yeah. and they want to be welcoming people back. But we will do it in a safe way. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. Well, thank you. Pleasure. Thank you for the time. <laughs>